Welcome to part two of our lecture series exploring how to create a QR code scanner using our Raspberry Pi Plus camera. In part one of this lecture series, we looked at the history and structure of QR codes and then looked at two ways to create QR codes. In this lecture, we'll take advantage of OpenCV to create our very own QR code scanner. Let's begin by logging into our Raspberry Pis and creating some code. Let's begin by creating a script that will read in a QR code. So I'll type sudo nano qrcode01.py. And inside of this script, let's go ahead and import OpenCV. So that'll be import CV2. I want access to the video feed. So I need to define a capture here. So we'll say capture equals cv2.videocapture of zero. That'll be the particular port on this Raspberry Pi to which the camera is connected. Let's go ahead and create a loop that will continuously run. So I'll say while true, we'll have a check comma image equals cap.read. Check will confirm that an image was recorded. And if an image was recorded, it'll be stored in the matrix that is IMG for image. Let's go ahead and show that image to the screen. So we'll type cv2.imshow and I'll call this QR code detector comma image. We'll show again that image matrix to the screen. Let's also put a key press wait key in. So I'll say if cv2.wait key of one equals equals ORD and let's tag the lowercase q key. That'll allow us to break out of this while true loop. And once we're done, let's release the capture and cv2.destroy all windows. That looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and control X to save this file. And then to execute the file, I'm going to head over to VNC because I want to monitor the video feed in real time. And of course, I can't do that with PuTTY, at least not natively. And so I'm going to head over to VNC to execute this file. So I'll type Python 3 QR code 01.py. And you'll notice here we have a video IO, a video input output error. This is because I did not run the sudo mod probe in the script. So let's head back over, open up QR code 01. Let's go ahead and import the OS package. And then we'll write now a command that will be that sudo mod probe call. So this will be sudo mod probe bcm2835 dash v4 l, l is in Lima, then the number of two. Pseudo mod pro BCM 2835 v4 l2. And we'll go ahead and run that with an os.system of command. That all looks pretty good. Let's control X to save again. And let's pop back over to VNC to run this updated script. I'll type Python 3 QR code 01.py. Looks like we have resolved the video input output error and now we have a live stream of our video feed. You might notice the camera here is upside down and this is due to how I have my Raspberry Pi mounted. But as we discussed with QR codes, this should be orientation agnostic in terms of reading the code. Let's continue by adding to our script. We're now able to access the video feed Let's go ahead and reopen the script, sudo nano QR code 01, and let's begin to enter the QR code reading functionality. So let's come down and now define a detector. We'll type detector equals cv2 dot QR code detector. And this will call upon the QR code detector that is now native to OpenCV4. This motivated the need to upgrade our version of OpenCV to make sure we had at least OpenCV4. We'll come down into the while true loop and we'll type data comma B box for bounding box comma underscore. And let's set that equal then to detector 
dot detect and decode and we'll pass to that the image that was recorded with our video feed. Let's go ahead and verify that OpenCV is able to properly detect and decode a QR code. So I'll type here print data comma data and let's simply print the data that was decoded by OpenCV to the screen. So control X and save. Let's go back over to VNC and let's run the script again. And you'll notice in the terminal window now, we have the string data colon being printed continuously inside the terminal window. Now there's no QR code in view of the camera just yet, so there's no data being detected and decoded. So now let's bring up that QR code on, in this case, I'll use my cell phone and place that QR code in the field of view of the camera. And we see then that OpenCV is able to detect the QR code in the camera field of view and accurately decode the information contained within the QR code, printing that to the terminal window. And as we expected then, the orientation of the QR code in the camera frame is of little importance. The algorithm is able to detect and decode the QR code no matter which orientation the QR code is placed. Let's hit Q to break out of this script and open up QR code01.py. And now let's add another level of functionality to our QR code detection. In the event where the OpenCV detector was able to identify a bounding box, so a box bounding the QR code, will show that bounding box to the screen, and then we'll also take the information contained in data and print that on the image to the screen as well. So let's say if bounding box, if bbox is not none, implying that bbox has some information, we'll say for i in range length of bbox, so len bbox, Let's draw our bounding box. Let's type cv2.line and we'll go ahead and draw a line segment for each component in the bounding box. So we'll draw that on image. We'll give cv2.line a starting and ending point. The starting point will be a tuple or a sequence of Python objects. That'll be tuple of bbox element i. The ending point of the line then, so we'll have comma tuple b box of i plus one. We need to define a color of this line. So I'll set color equal to red, remember we're in BGR space in OpenCV, so red will be 00255, B comma G comma R. We need a thickness of each line in the bounding box, so we'll set that thickness equal to four. We also want to print the data to the screen in the form of text. So we'll type cv2.putText, where do we want to put the text? We want to put that on image. What do we want to print on the image? We want to print data. Let's define an XY coordinate to locate the text. We'll choose a font type of cv2.font underscore Hershey underscore simplex. A font scale factor of 0 0.5. We'll make this font blue, so BGR will be 255.00 as blue, and a thickness of 2. That looks good. Let's head down in our script. And let's say that if data has been detected, and only if data has been detected, go ahead and print data to the terminal window. So I'll add an if data conditional 
if data is present, go ahead and print data to the terminal window. Let's add in some comments here for the user. We'll say show result to the screen. And if the Q key is pressed on the keyboard, we'll break out of the loop. That all looks good. Let's control X and save and head back over to VNC. In the terminal window inside VNC, We'll type Python 3 QR code 01.py, and it looks like we have a syntax error in this code. So I'll hop back over to PuTTY, and let's take a look. It looks like on my cv2.line call, I am missing a right parenthesis. Let's go ahead and add that back in. Looks good. We'll control X and save. And let's try that again in VNC. And here we go. That has resolved the syntax error. And the QR code 01.py script is now running as expected on the Raspberry Pi. We're able to view the video output from the Pi's camera. So now we'll place a QR code in the field of view of the camera. We see that the QR code scanner has recognized a QR code. It has accurately decoded the information. So we see ENME489Y exclamation point in the terminal window being printed to the screen. And we also see that the bounding box in red has been plotted on each frame of the video, along with the cv2.put text in blue that is the data from the QR code. So that's ENME489Y exclamation point. And we also see that once again, the orientation of the QR code does not matter in the camera's field of view in terms of detecting and decoding the information inside that QR code with our Python script. That wraps up part two of our lecture series exploring how to create our very own QR code scanner using our Raspberry Pi Plus camera. In part three of this lecture series, we'll take a look at a particular case study, a particular application of the use of QR codes involving control of a robotic gripper by decoding the information embedded within a variety of QR codes. As always, if you have any questions, reach out to me anytime. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.